All right, so this is yet another stream recording. I've uploaded a few onto the second channel, and the introduction to this is going to be a little bit jarring. So I'm going to provide some context to explain why this stream recording is the way it is. So as with a lot of these, they were done on Twitch, obviously, which is why I'm bringing them here over to YouTube. And this stream was the first Nomergon that I ran with what is now my guilt. And... At the time, they were just a pug group. I initially raided in Season of Discovery in Phase 1 with my retail guild. All of those people quit, and I had to join a pug. So, week 1, I joined some really shitty pug. They couldn't even kill Thermaplug. And I spent a lot of time looking for a good guild that I would potentially join. And basically, like, I talked to a few. I found this one, and they seemed solid. The times were potentially conflicting, but they had killed Thermaplug multiple times, and I wanted to make sure that I was actually going to clear the raid, because at this point, I wanted to make my Nomergon tank guide, or specifically lock guide, which I'm glad I've finally now finished. But at the time, I did not have really good Thermaplug footage. Really wanted to get that done. And I was told that they were a 6 out of 6 guild, which they were. But I was led to believe that it was going to be like super duper clean and we were going to have like a good raid team. They all had experience and stuff like that. And I believe it was a bit of a miscommunication because I ended up in this run, which was basically all fresh players and I was just hard carrying. And honestly, if I had known that the run was going to go like this, I wouldn't have joined i would probably have said i'm probably going to look for something else thank you for the offer but i effectively got kind of misled into joining this, this guild or joining this guild's run i should say and i was pretty fucking miserable i will be honest i was not having a good time it was pretty bad we wiped a lot it was easily worse than the nomergon that i had done the previous week and i wasn't even sure we were going to kill thermoplug However, we did, and since it's still pretty good and it's actually the only kill so far where I've gone full bomb duty as a warlock, I am going to at least include the Thermoplug kill here just to kind of segue into other stuff. And I'm going to include the rest of the stream. The reason why I don't want to include the early parts of the stream, in case it wasn't already obvious, is because I was just not having a fun time and i said a lot of like really mean things about the raid uh, the raiders um not like personal things but like you know this guy's damage sucks this person keeps dying to dumb shit etc etc and while i was obviously frustrated and i all of my comments were mere observations it was just stuff that was happening i generally speaking don't like to shit talk people that i actually like right um if a random fucks up i'm fine calling them out uh but the follow-up to this is that after this raid i talked to the gm who was actually really nice and frankly the only saving grace of this raid which i think i will end up discussing a little bit later on he was actually really chill and if it wasn't for his call outs and like his personal performance it would have gone much worse so I was willing to hear him out, and I, he basically said that like it was completely fresh people, and there had been some miscommunication. Like I was told that I was going to be like going in for one of their main teams, and I ended up basically being on the brand new B team, or I think it was like a C team, like their third team that they had just spun up, which explains why things were an absolute train wreck throughout the Nomergon run. And... I really liked a lot of the stuff the GM said. He seemed like a really cool guy. I respected a lot of the decisions he made despite the raid being terrible. For instance, while it may seem a little bit selfish, he gave me a uh, glimmering gizmo blade completely uncontested. So, of course, I'm a little bit biased because I think that was a great call. I think he made a great choice giving me my best in slot dagger without even um, letting people roll on it. And it is a really good tank item. But the fact that Despite being a pug, he, without me saying anything whatsoever, 
said, I'm going to give this to Lenara because, you know, he has done really well this raid and it's a really good lock tank item. And I think that is just what's fair. That kind of told me everything I needed to know about like his character as a person, that he's willing to prioritize fairness and actual like loot going to the right people, even though I was a trial. And for all he knew, I was probably never going to show up again because I wasn't like I didn't say anything to people. I wasn't mean. But I wasn't talking a lot, and I think it was pretty evident that I wasn't having the greatest time. He even said later on he was also miserable that run because it went way worse than he expected. So all of that being said, in retrospect, after the stream, I have a lot of respect for the leader of that raid and the guild as a whole and how they've handled stuff in the past. So I do not want there to be a record, quite frankly, of me being pissed off at the raid being shit, even if that is what happened at the moment. Uh, the only reason that I'm even uploading parts of the stream is because that particular Nomergon run was the first half of it. And like I said, I'm including Thermaplug just because uh, I think it was, you know, a pretty cool kill. I think I kicked ass on bomb duty and yeah, but there was also like two hours after that where I actually think there was like a lot of good discussion uh you know there were a few people in the chat who like asked me some good questions that like i'm like oh yeah that i have like some interesting responses to that at least i feel uh and it was like a good nice two hours of like stranglethorn fishing and stuff so i want to make sure that that section isn't lost because i actually feel that was one of like the more interesting things that i streamed as far as like you know random conversation topics go but I was kind of torn on how to handle this because I didn't want to include the starting thing. So that's how we're going to do it. Uh, generally speaking, I'm going to try and keep editing for the second channel to a minimum. It It's kind of the entire point of me creating this is to solve the problem of I cannot put out content without doing a shit ton of editing on it because that is just the reality of when your channel starts to grow, you have to continue raising your standards because one bad video sinks everything. So, I it, you see this all the time, and I've been trying to hold back on doing it for quite a while, uh, but I'm I'm finally biting the bullet on that and saying, okay, I still want to make certain types of content just for fun, and because I know there are people who enjoy it, but I cannot justify putting that on my main channel, so I got to do this. And one of the other factors in that is the time investment for a second channel like this needs to be absolute bare minimum. Yeah, I can't be recording stuff like this. Frankly, the only reason I'm even recording this intro right now is because I'm doing super blooms. Uh, I'm uh, running around trying to get my stupid legendary axe, and I need to do that before raid, and I, I have to follow stupid spruce crown anyway. And because I'm probably really not going to talk about this, you know, just like little fun extra bonus rant, who the fuck designed the Feralath questline? Whatever designer made this shit, please just just give me their name so i can have a nice conversation with them and you know even better let me know that they've been fired from blizzard because i i hope that's the case because god whoever made this actually has no fucking idea how to design a game fucking 200 shade leaf from fucking super blooms and you get like 15 per and it's an hourly event and super blooms being the most boring thing ever actually just the dumbest fucking dog shit design ever and I am, I'm at my wit's end. I'm going to be real. I am. Oh, I've been up since 7 in the morning doing it. It's 5 p.m. at the time we'll be recording this. I have raided in three hours. And I'm I'm probably going to get my fucking legendary axe in time. But it's it's been a process. And the stupid thing that's supposed to increase your dream leaf whatever earned doesn't work. It just, it like doesn't do it. I've done it four times now and I've never gotten the buff. I can't get the fucking 50% multiplier. So I have just wasted like hours of my time today. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm having a great time. I'm having a fucking wonderful time. But since I'm literally sitting here waiting for Spruce Crown to move his fucking ass, figured I'd record this little bit of an intro for the uh, the stream recording. And um, yeah, so here's Thermaplug. Hope you enjoy. And I mean, I'm including that just as a bonus. Main reason for this, which I hope most people will like, is some of the discussion later on for the fishing stuff. Uh, but, anyways, on to the actual stream. Okay. Hey, We're son, are in. you in PvP? Everybody slash PvP right now. 
I'm now this. flagged for PvP. Okay. This. Okay. PvP. Slash PvP. Do I want to be flagged um, for PvP? Yes. 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 That way my mass regen can hit you. Because I was like, why isn't it hitting? Uh, unflagged. Flag. Yeah, mass regen's rough too. Everyone's flagged up. I checked. All right. We'll see you to pull in. Let me get a little bit of threat here, guys, just so I don't get in, have any weird issues getting them. Yeah, I took threat off of him earlier. You sure last did. Game. I don't know how with that star sword nerf. I I was get, I had like 300 DPS, I think. Five, four, three, two, one. So just listen to me when I, I miss. Get out of the front. Get out of the front, I'll miss. Um, fucking went right on me. Okay. I'm running. Thank you. You're welcome. I hope that bomb doesn't spawn. <laughs> For real, right? All right. So, miss, get ready. Now go ahead and taunt. Got these bombs. Hey, okay, big hills on miss. Okay. Killing big bomb. hills on miss. Big hills on miss. Ooh, stay bare, buddy. All right, in five seconds, I'm gonna taunt back off you. Okay, bombs are out again still... over here. Okay, I'm still on. Go. Um, I'm clear Not for. Me. You can go cat now. Okay. Big damage on the boss, guys. Let's get out of this phase. Okay. I'm gonna take I'm it out. now. Watch the frontal. I can't take him here. Hold on. Lenara, that's you for bomb pressing. I got it. Get it go. Okay. Move the boss a little bit, miss, to the right. Come on over here. You don't want to get I'm spawned down. on. I All right, I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. All right. Cat missed, and then just stay cat the rest of this, okay? Bomb out again on the side here in the front. Can't be me. I, I got, got it. it. You got it? Okay. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I'm taking it the rest, miss. Don't worry about it. Okay, bombs big damage here. I'm gonna move them for bombs. Alright, focus, focus, phase, phase, phase. Everybody switch. Everybody switch. Phase them. Alright. Bombs out. I bubbled okay, up the stacks. Alright, let's uh how are we looking, healers? You got any cooldowns for yourself or I'm good. I got PI, but I need mana. Oh, holy, go ahead and get an Innervay from Mist. Okay. Big, this is big uh, tank damage phase. Okay, bombs out. I got it. Thank you. Don't worry about uh, cleansing me too hard, holy. Save your man a little bit. I'll just freed him. Coolant discharge coming out. Bombs, Bombs out. Bombs in the same oh. spot. You touch it. It's me. It's me. Someone else right. grab that. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Just... Bombs out again. Big damage. Big damage. Same spot. Same spot? Same spot. I'll get it. That's great. Sun help healers in group two. Bomb. Bomb in the Healing front there. Part. I got it. The bomb's out. Okay. Another bomb out on the opposite side. I, I, I got, got it. it. You got it? Okay. Sweet. Love it. Good bomb work. Alright. Bomb's out again. Bomb I have sixteen percent. I can't get it. I got we got 16% here, guys. We need to start pushing in here. We're getting some stacks building up. All right, Bond Squad, if you can help with the damage Bombs. on the boss. Bombs are kind of crazy right now. I'll get it. Focus, Thank focus, you. focus. 7%. Help us out here. Let's let's push. Bombs on the... I got the bomb in the back. Okay. Getting it, getting it. Push, push, push. seconds. Okay, this is nature phase. Dissolve, get ready to be interrupting. It's gonna show. It's gonna show up. Um, I'm gonna dispel. I'll handle dispels. Yeah, someone oh. handle these bombs. 
All right, let's get these stacks yeah. off, guys. Everybody get these stacks off. Le Leanne, can you blink out of that? Does that work? Does it, does blink even work on that? Um, let me see. Okay. Nope. Okay. My bombs are going to be faster now. I'll dispel myself. Don't worry about it, Holy. Uh, do we have an innervate? Bombs out by me. You got it? Okay, got it. Do we have an innervate? I got it. All right, thanks, brother. Okay, bombs out one interrupt. second. Interrupt, interrupt, interrupt. Good shit. I got bombs. Um, cool. Thank you. Uh, healers, this is a good phase for you guys to get some mana back, too. For the bombs. Okay, good shit. Bomb. Good shit. Holy. I'll get it. I got it. Interrupt. Me? You got it? Okay. Just kill him. Okay. Okay. Recover. We stabilize here. We got this, guys. Bombs I got on bombs. Thank you. Bombs out in three seconds. Okay. Interrupt. Interrupt, interrupt. Good shit. Okay. Bombs out where? Or a bomb? Same spot. Same spot. I can't get I mean, it. I got it. I got okay. it. I got it. Okay. Thank you. Big heels on me. Holy's getting kind of low. Help him out, son, if you can. Yep. Bombs out again. Got it. Okay. Yep. I got it. I got it. Interrupt! 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 Fine. I got it. Got it. Bombs out. Where? Bombs out. Oh, here in the front. Hey, we're okay, that's phase. Right, this is mind. all in one. This is all in one. Got it. Okay. Clean up these bombs. Let's get this. Can you drink a nature pot? Yeah, I already yeah, did that. Yeah, chug a nature pot right here. If you haven't, if you're a healer, don't save it for mana pots. So this is interrupt. This is flames. So stay away from the tank. Stay away from me. This is flames here, and frost bombs and interrupt. So dissolve. Make sure you're on that boss, but not in front of the flames. Bombs out somewhere. Bombs in the back. In the back. Okay. I'll click this. Bullet discharge coming out. Bombs out in the. So everybody somewhere. together. Same, same, same spot. spot. Right. I'm Help on your it. Healers out. Running over there now. Missed. Um, uh, I might need you to tank for a second. Got it. Okay. Got bombs. I got, got bombs. Okay. But don't do it until I say. All right. Focus up. Okay. This is flame. Okay. After this. Oof. Am I gonna make it here? I can bubble. I will. I'll bubble. Um. I'm I'm almost home here. Okay. Uh, help your healers out. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Out. Get that bomb. Um, Get that I can't. Bomb. I can't. I I. I'm someone else. Okay, someone else. I can. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Okay. I got it. Got it. Got it. All right. Bombs out again. I'm Get these okay. bombs and then. Killing. Killing bombs. I got it. I got it. Okay. All right. Um, Lenara, come over here and get this boss soon. Get ready to tank. I'm home too. Just call for it. Tank, tank, tank. Bombs, bombs out, out in the, the, the back. Bomb. Bombs out in the back. Run, run, On cooldown. Thank you. Okay, focus up. Get these bombs better. Big heals on Lenara. I got heals coming for you. I got heals coming for you. Bomb out. I got bombs. I got bombs. Kill the bombs. Kill the bombs. Kill the bombs. Kill the Killing bombs. Killing bombs. Okay, con interrupt. clear chat. Clear chat. Interrupt. 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 All right. Everybody swap to boss. Lenara handle bombs. I got this one. Swap to boss. Everybody. Come on. Nuke. 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 Big heals on me. Big heals on me. Come on, guys. Easiest one. Alright. Okay. okay. Hit the boss. Hit the boss. Hit the boss. 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 Yeah. Nuke. Fuck nuke. You nuke. Thermoplug, you shit. big bitch. Fuck you. Big shit. Ooh. Holy shit. Nice. Yeah, the last phase is easiest. How funny is that? <laughs> Fuck me. That was actually yeah, stressful. Uh, mana. So this gear right here, it's got mana per five. This goes to healers. So healers, roll that out. Oh, man. Nice roll. <laughs> Leanne, grass Thanks. brother. Thanks. All right. We got... Um, yeah, my bad. This is the epic Bye. neck quest. Everybody who doesn't have it, go ahead and roll. 
Oh my god. I got sun fired on top. Yep. Yep. Congrats, brother. Um, don't turn that in so we can get Boone. Yep. I got boots. Everybody that doesn't have tier boots, roll. Oh, wait. Hold on. Wait, I have boots. My bad. I didn't know. Uh, Lenar. 92, um, Lenar. Congrats, brother. All right, we got the epic fist weapon. This is uh, rogue. Uh, <laughs> melee. Well, we don't have a melee hunter, so not the one I'd love to have, one, but right. Neat. I take those. Okay. And then we got a melee uh, attack power and uh, uh, dwarf. This is yours too. So everyone roll. Mine too. It's got eighteen. Yeah. It do oh, rage to have one. Huge. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Roll. Let me double check my best Dwarf slot list. Yeah. Dwarf, grass, brother. Yeah. It's um. All right. All right. So now um. All right. So I know uh, we got a pug here. So ten percent. So that's two. We'll go to our pug. Be fair. And Lenar, if you're interested in joining, just let me know after this real quick. Um, so everyone who has the 225 profession and is ready to craft it has the pattern, has done the quest line, and your role for the profession, um, Grime and Crescent. If you have the pattern and you've done the quest line and you are ready to craft it, roll. Who else is there? I know there's more than me. I don't have a pattern. Okay. Well, do you have you done the quest line? I haven't done the quest line yet. Okay. I plan um, to, but I just hit 225 time. yesterday. No one else? None of you? Okay. So it's going to be me then. I will I guess I'll take these. So this is how we're doing it, guys, just so you guys know. Uh, we're going to funnel it to the person who wins the role so they get it. So these profession quests are a bitch. They require other professions for you to get it, and they're very expensive on the auction house. So the person who gets it is their responsibility to get with other people in the guild with those professions so they can get these mats. So I guess I'm the only one. There's no one else. Okay. But uh, good job, guys. Good shit. Yeah, GG. Let's all go to. Uh, I I, so yeah, I, I have a portal. Okay. But I'm still in combat. Why am I still in combat? Yeah, I am too. Actually. You should take the portal. All right. Teleporter. Well, I think I combat. can catch the very tail end of the fishing tournament. <laughs> actually, I got, I got an entire hour. So, yeah. Could be worse. Could be worse. Um. Nope. Yeah. Same. Good shit. Oh, now I'm out of combat. Where do where do you want us? Where do you want me to? Iron send? Forge, so we can. That last boss is actually really stressful. For next raid this Saturday. How did I do? I think I got logged as a. Uh, yeah, I got logged as a DPS. First raid. I know that was kind of a lot to take in, but it's very easy when you do it a couple of times. Menagerie was the only boss where I improved did you guys my. Enjoy um... it? Hell yeah! Yeah, it was rough on the healers, but. I actually oh, I did know. pretty hey, good. Man. Y'all did overall, really good, man. I mean, Leanne, uh, with the PvP, that was unfortunate, but now we know for sure that was that was the play. It's a really good job on the bomb squad, on Sunfire doing all three, the healers, and Miss doing his little taunt shit. What the hell is that mace, brother? Oh my god. <laughs> hey, uh, you forgot to give me credit for the fucking. I absolutely trap carried trap. the shit out of this group, though. God damn. That was a good oh, yeah. call by me raiding the... That was a good call. That was a good call. That's good. Being a guild leader, stepping up, making uh, plays. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Hey, six out of six, though. Good yeah, shit. thanks for leading, by the way. You're welcome. Nice. <laughs> um, whenever you're ready to drop that, I'll be in this stuff. Yeah, I'm running over there right now. How do you, uh, do you still have to go to Darnassus to buy that fucking bullshit or what? So I guess, what did That's I come out of this with? No, it's Obviously, yeah, I got my Bist Dagger. Uh, this is massive. 
This is massive. Oh, where's the fucking um, Rage of Injured and Iron Forge? Uh, there's one in the Mystic Ward. Or if you're closer to the inn, there's one right next to the inn. Yeah. Yeah, like the innkeeper. Yeah. Yeah, just tell me when everyone. Yeah, I mean, look, I'll be honest. I'm a, uh, I'm kind of tilted, but like, I don't know. I I can't be mad at the people. Like, especially that guy, the paladin. You know, he his actually his raid leading was not bad. Like, he was not the issue. His tanking also wasn't bad, right? Like. I, I definitely am not upset with him. And, and it's one of those things where, like, to a certain degree, like, you know, I'm going to vent. Like, I, I rant and I, I, you know, complain and stuff. And it's just cathartic to an extent, but obviously. That's why I always say, like, I don't know. How, how do I put this? I don't, I don't think that I am, like, toxic, right? Because, like, I, I've seen a lot of people who, when I like well like complain and just whine and stuff and like you know speed runs and shit they'll be like oh this guy's so toxic and it's like look i think if you're just sitting there ranting to yourself like i do that all the fucking time i do that even when i'm not recording right like i i was playing fucking doom eternal the other day which i've been slowly working my way through and i god i i was fucking screaming I I hate that game so much sometimes. Uh I even I uninstalled it. I'll probably reinstall it at some point. But it's like cathartic to uninstall it. Um But like, you know, it's I'll, I'll sit there. I'll fucking yell at the top of my lungs about dumb bullshit, right? But it's I think it's when you direct toxicity at other people. That's where like I draw the line. Like I I'm more than happy to sit here fucking yell and curse and and be mad, but I can't, I, I'm not, I'm mad at the situation, I'm not mad at any individual person in that group. And honestly, all things considered, they, they pulled it together towards the end. I think, it, it, the, the main thing that I, that frustrates me about that is, I, I'm assuming, you know, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt, it was most likely just a communication issue, and I don't think they intended to mislead me. I was told that it was a six out of six, like, experienced guild group. I mean, they even said bring consumes, right? And, like, I, I'm i going to consume fucking critters. Like, I, I always used to joke, I will pre-pot on critters. <laughs> because, like, that's just what I do. And I have... I think I talked about this before. Um, but, like, I, I have... In, basically ridiculous amount of gold in season of discovery uh i just recently bought the fucking sniper scope recipe and i've been selling those i'm the only crafter on my server so well i am like also extremely stingy because it's one of those things where like well it may seem like oh yeah you have a lot of gold like why you're like you know it shouldn't matter but at the same time i i keep a lot of gold by being a cheapskate and uh it's kind of like, you know, a, a duality of I hate spending excess gold or wasting gold, but if I think it's going to give me an advantage, whatever. I've always said, like, in um, fucking raids and stuff, that I gold is a means to an end for me. I will spend it on whatever I can to get an advantage. <sighs> so I bought consumes, and I would have done that anyways, but... It does feel a little bit annoying when I'm... I was led to believe that it was a consume group. And everybody would be prepared and it was, like, organized and stuff. I'm also... It's one of those things where what can you do? And, like, I'm a little bit peeved, but, like, I... I, I get it. They probably just, you know... I, that's why I think it's more of a communication issue. I was told that I would be main tanking. I like main tanking. It's literally what my build is geared for. 
So I built myself for main tanking. I'm used to main tanking. I know the fights as a main tank. And then I'm like basically off tanking half the time. Even though, let's be honest, I should have been main tanking because it like fucking... I, I mean, I was ripping threat half the time because, you know, just damage alone. My damage was going to be the highest for threat. Um, I guess I'll, I'll change the title to, uh... Stranglethorn Fishing. And I'll put and Nomer. Because, like, you know... I'll fix it later. I'll fi I have to fix the title when I do the recording. It doesn't really matter, though. I doubt most people are going to watch the Twitch VODs. This is more so going to be, like, when I take this and turn it into a YouTube video on, like, the new second channel, which, you know, this will be the second video. Probably need to do that tonight. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um... Uh, but yeah, I think overall, communication issues aside, if I step back and, like, take myself out of the frustration, like, you know, I, I've hyper fixated on all the cons, right? All the cons. It's like, I wanted to maintain, they made me off tank. You know, the run was kind of scuffed, is what it is. They weren't using consumables, even though I was told it was a consumable group. Okay, that all sucks, but... Forcing myself to think positively. We did get six out of six, which is better than the group that I was in last week. And while I was carrying damage as a tank in both runs, I was not carrying quite as hard this time. The uh, average DPS were a little bit better. Uh, also, the other tank, you know, the raid leader was good. I liked his callouts. He did a good job. Uh, effectively, I solo tanked the pub Gnomer ground I did a few days ago, and... Yeah, that sucked. Um, another plus. Um, they were pretty nice. Nice people. And I think that is something where... <laughs> At the end of the day, I, I like killing bosses, frankly, more than I do caring too much about the environment i've raided in some really shit guilds i i just tuned that out half the time but it you know credit where it's due that was a pretty chill group of people i don't mind it that much and also i guess another thing obviously like i got good loot right the fucking gizmo blade but kind of going along with that the fact that they did not discriminate against me, even though I am technically not a part of their guild, right? Like, I, I am effectively a pug at this point. And not only did they give me a cut of the grime-encrusted stuff, which was... I would didn't even expect that, honestly, but it was nice of them. Um, and... The, the dagger surprised me. I will say that. That was like a... Okay. I, I think... The vast majority of groups would not have just given that to me. That was pretty cool. So, it's hard to be bad after that, I'll be honest. It's it's hard. Um, but I think no matter how you slice it, that was actually really cool. So it's... I gotta weigh my pros and cons. I think... Um, I think I'd give these guys at least another chance. The only issue is, and this is probably something that I'll have to figure out what the fuck they want to do about that. Um, kind of goes hand in hand with what I was saying at the start of my schedule is ridiculously tight. I have, you know, retail raid and and also just I outside of retail raid, I really don't like locking myself down to consistent schedules because something that actually happens uh, like, late last year is, uh, like, I want to say October, November, is I started raiding in Wrath Classic, and because, obviously, my retail raid days are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I had to raid in a weekend guild, and that had, like, set times, but 
the other thing is when I'm streaming regularly, my regular streaming days were on the weekend. So there was like a period of two months where my streaming days became extremely erratic and I just had to kind of stream whenever because at the end of the day, like the thing that I have the most control over is when I stream and I was raiding effectively five days a week and I had like locked myself into those times. And obviously that was like a more prolonged thing. And I hated that. No, that was, a, that's a separate topic. The fucking ICC. I've raided a lot of raids in classic. Ice Crown Citadel is the least fun I've ever had raiding in classic. Like Black Temple was pretty chill. Uh, I didn't get super far into Sunwell Plateau. Uh, I only got up to like Brutalis. I was in like a, a shitty guild. Um, so, I mean, I, I basically didn't raid Sunwell Plateau, but the little bit I did of it, I was like, eh, you know, raids seems neat. Um, and the other raids I did in TBC were fine. Max Ramos was whatever. Ulduar was cool. I think Ulduar is a little bit overrated. If anything, it just kind of gets boring on reclears, but like, and General Vezax is a terrible boss. That sucked. Um... And, I, like, Yogg was fun the first time, but Yogg Zero Lights is just really tedious. The main thing I hated about Yogg is just the amount of RNG present in that fight. Like, there was a pull where I just, my entire sanity just got drained out of nowhere. There's, like, nothing I can do. I'm just like, okay, I'm fucked. I'm going insane now. And it was effectively a wipe because the backup third tank fucked up and we just didn't have a tank. Um, and I was like, I've never seen my sanity get fucked, but I just, it was like, it picks a random person and drains like a tiny bit of sanity and I got picked like 10 times in a row. It's like, what do you do about that? You're just fucked. <laughs> you can't counteract that. Uh, oh yeah, so fun little um, trick. I'm also gonna change my... Apologies if it sounds a little bit loud on stream, but this is what I gotta do to make sure that I don't miss a bobber. I have to turn the sound effects way up. Uh, it's really hard to see, but there's actually a pool of fish underneath the water. This happens a lot all around the Stranglethorn coast, but there's a few spots. Uh, this spot in particular, it happens. There's one a little bit further down Yojamba Island where this happens. And the nice thing about this is if you know that these locations exist, you have an advantage over most of the competition in the Stranglethorn Fishing Extravaganza, because a lot of people just don't even look out for these pools. And even if they see you fishing here, like I've had times where I'm fishing in this underwater pool, and people run right past me. Because they probably look at me fishing here and they think, wow, this guy's an idiot. He doesn't realize that you need to fish in pools. And they don't even bother to check, so you basically get a free pool all to yourself. I don't know why it works like this, but nice thing is you just need to land your bobber in the area where it is. Doesn't matter if it's like underwater or not. It can be a little bit hard to gauge the distance, though. The only annoying thing is it it's difficult to see, so it's hard to tell when it's despawned. But yeah, that one's gone. There we go. That rainstorm is making things even harder to see. Um... Oh, there is a, yeah, so I said before, there's one that spawns underwater, so there we go. It's over there. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, I mean, I was just rambling, but yeah, ICC sucked. I fucking hated ICC. And it's a shame, because, like, I was really looking forward to it, because I heard good things about uh, ICC. I got all the way up to Heroic 25 Lich King, but... I was not having a fun time at all on progression up to Lich King. Putricide was an okay boss, but Putricide is just... There's so many things that can go wrong. It's just really fucking annoying. Really was not enjoying it. And then Sindragosa was just really tedious. I technically was like off tanking on Sindragosa, but still, I played a Paladin. And then like Valithria, it's fucking terrible. Lanithel is fine. Uh, Blood Prince Council is one of the worst boss fights ever made. <laughs> I, that is just absolute cancer. And also the group that I was raiding ICC with was kind of toxic. So there was that. 
and then I got to I got to fucking Lich King and I saw how absolutely miserable it was going to be and I just said nope and uh, I stopped reading I didn't feel bad about it though because uh my classic guild leader was being a massive prick so I felt completely justified in just G quitting on the spot I think I told it, it actually oh yeah it happened on stream I forget which stream it was I think it was one of the rogue leveling speedruns that I did like in November or something, but uh, I was sick a few days earlier, so I actually like said I wouldn't be able to raid, and I missed the first day, but then I was feeling good enough to stream on the second day, but obviously, you know, I'm not going to show up for, like, I missed all of the reclear bosses. Now that I was feeling better, I'm not just going to show up on the second day just to slam my face into Heroic Lich King, and I already told him I wouldn't be there that week. So I'm streaming, the rogue speedrun, which I had to do at some point, it's literally my job, and he just, like, classic GM starts fucking flaming me in Discord messages for not showing up, even though I had already told him I wouldn't be there. Uh, and he's like, oh, well, clearly, you, you know, you have, um, you for feeling good enough to stream, but, you know, you weren't willing to show up to raid. I'm just like, fuck you, dude. Like, you don't police my life. I talk, I can't remember if I talked about that on stream, because I know it happened while I was streaming, and I mentioned on that particular stream that yeah exactly yeah so yes the moon you you probably saw that one i did i told the story in discord after the fact that much i know and i can't remember if i told the story again on a stream later but it really pissed me off um but yeah so i ended up quitting that guild at that point and i honestly haven't played wrath classic since which is a shame, because, like, there were a few things that I want to do still in Wrath Classic, and I probably will at some point. But that was, like, late November, and then Sod came out. And, I mean, I've been really enjoying Sod. So, well, I, I wish Blizzard timed things a bit better, because there I would have liked to play it a little bit more. The main thing I wanted to try still is... Well, I wanted to do a 1 to 80 speed run. I probably will still do that at some point before Cataclysm, especially because I've already done like so much prep for that. And I suspect that Sod Phase 2 will last at, like longer than Phase 1, a few months. And at this point, like, I'm obviously not done with Sod Phase 2, not even close, but I'm already level 40. I don't really know if I'm going to level anything aside from my Paladin after my warlock because like i i wanted to try all the tanks at first but at this point i like lock tank and i'm more than happy to keep playing that i really want to try pally tank which i'm definitely getting that to 40 i've already started leveling it i'm also going to do like a pally leveling stream tomorrow i've been kicking the can down the road for that but uh, i've been like leveling it on and off the main issue is aside from like separate projects like you know working on videos and stuff it's, like, my my gameplay the past few days for Sod has just been very, what's the, uh, what's the word for it? Very, like, erratic. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking for. So I'll, like, level my Paladin for, like, an hour, and then I'll do something on my Warlock, and then I'll do something on my alt account, and... I want to sit down and just get stuff done on my Paladin. And one of the main things, like, earlier today that I thought about doing, I'm like, you know, obviously I had the Dark Iron Ambassador run. Ooh, that's another thing. They didn't kill the Dark Iron Ambassador in that run that we just did. Which means that later, actually, it would have to be literally later tonight, I can go back into Nomergon and solo the Dark Iron Ambassador a second time and make... Uh, money off those three Grime Encrusted Salvage. Ho ho ho. Alright. That's actually pretty nice. I didn't even think of that until just now. Um, but yeah, so I was doing that video. I had to make that earlier today. And uh, because I knew that I was raiding Gnomergon, I was doing prep for that. And I got this thing, the Infernal Pact Essence, which you have to get from the Blood Moon. And... Well, I, I misunderstood how the Blood Moon worked. 
So I was sitting on like 3,000 of these uh, copper blood coins, and I was under the impression, because I'm shit at reading, that I needed 5,000 blood or copper coins to purchase the Infernal Pact Essence. So I was like farming nonstop the Blood Moon to try and afford this thing. And it was like 4 p.m. And I'm like, man, there is absolutely no way that I'm going to have enough time to finish farming out this trinket. And then I stopped by the vendor just for like shits and giggles. And I realized that I'm dumb and it's not 5,000, it's 500. So I had enough, <laughs> like way more than enough. So I bought the trinket and then I bought like a shit ton of um, Stranglethorn lumber. But by that point, I had literally spent the past like 12 hours getting every single blood moon and farming that. <laughs> and when I'm trying to switch back to my lock to do the blood moon every three hours, it becomes hard to like consistently level my paladin. Also, days before that, I had just purchased the sniper scope and I was frantically trying to make enough gold to like buy it because I had spoken to the guy who got the first schematic on the server and we were like trying to work out a deal. And I was like, I'll pay you 400 gold. And he said he wanted 500 gold. And I didn't even have 400 gold, but like I'm, I said, all right, let me know if you change your mind. So I was desperately trying to get 400 gold together on my on the Alliance side. And one of the other issues is I had a ton of gold on Horde. I had 600 gold on Horde side, but like while I could have just moved the gold through the neutral auction house, there's like a 15% cut on any gold that you make from uh, neutral auctions. So while I could have just moved it, I would have lost like, I don't know, probably like 75 gold or something moving it all over. And that's a pretty big price. So instead of just moving the raw gold and taking the massive hit, I basically spent like 24 hours just monitoring prices of things on the Horde auction house and buying high value BOEs. Because the items themselves, you don't lose value on it when you move it across the auction house. Because if I sell it on the neutral auction house for 50 copper and then snipe it on my other account, I'm only losing the auction house cut on that 50 copper. Like, the value of the item is unaffected. So I effectively moved, like, 200 BOEs from Horde to Alliance. And it was about, like, 500 gold worth of BOEs. But then, of course, now that I have this stuff, I have to sell it. So then I spent the next 24 hours after that endlessly reposting auctions. Because as it turns out, posting 250 BOEs on the auction house is a very, very time-consuming process. Especially when it's like a lot of different, like, random greens and blues that I have to, like, price check. And then, you know, when I get undercut, I have to repost and stuff like that. Massively time-consuming. So I basically spent my entire, like, past weekend doing that. Um, yeah, so basically streaming just hasn't, hasn't really worked out. And then, of course, before that, I was sick. Uh, my, my past, like, week or two has been extremely hectic. Like, insanely hectic. Uh, but now it's like my schedule's finally clearing up. Thankfully, and I can, uh, I can do stuff again. I need to drink some water before I murder my throat. <coughs> I still have also, like, lingering symptoms from my colds. Like, randomly today, my cough came back. Otherwise, I feel fine. Like, I don't have a sore throat at all. Um, my nose no longer feels like it's completely stuffed. But every once in a while, I just cough. One thing that's kind of interesting. I got the tier boots. And the tier boots are not bad. Let me double check my, my best in slot list. Yeah. So, I forget exactly what they do. I did, I did the math earlier and I, I wrote it all out for myself. Technically speaking, the irradiated boots, the ones that actually dropped earlier in the raid are my best in slot but 
Warlock tank gearing is really, 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 really weird. This phase, especially with the tier set. Because the irradiated tier set, you cannot get the two-piece. Because the two-piece actually gives you a stamina reduction. Which, like, if you're a DPS, who gives a shit? But that is really bad for a tank. You cannot have that. And the two-piece bonus for the tank set is actually really good. So, technically speaking, the best combo for Warlock tanks is two-piece tank set, one-piece uh, DPS set. Is this guy going to try to fucking kill me? Oh, he's level 36. I can kick his ass if he tries. But I forget exactly what... I, I looked into it to try and figure out what it was. I'm pretty sure Pants... Um... Yeah, pants, if I remember correctly, those you definitely want the tank set. But then it's like, it's a toss-up whether you want boots or or chest. And I think technically irradiated boots are the better one to take the one piece with. I don't know. I'll have to look back into it. Uh, Surprise said, hey, Mr. Leveling Speedrun, when did you move to streaming on Twitch? Uh, I haven't, like, moved to streaming on Twitch 100% of the time, so... Uh, how do I describe this? Basically, this is just kind of a bonus stream. Um, I'm... My official, like, streaming schedule that I'll probably do going forward... That is... Uh, I'll have to figure out how I'm going to do that. Effectively, the easiest way for me to describe it is any... Unofficial chill streams like this where I'm really not doing anything. Like, I, I'm fishing right now. Right, it's, it's not, like, very interesting. Uh, this is, works well on Twitch. Because... I guess to summarize, the way like YouTube works is whenever I stream, right, that becomes a video. Now I can unlist the video, but still, the stream itself is treated as a video as far as how it impacts the algorithm. And, you know, I, I know it's like, you know, ask any YouTuber about, you know, what they're doing and half the time they're going to say algorithm, algorithm, algorithm. And I don't... I don't like to do things specifically to, like, boost myself in the YouTube algorithm, right? Like, you know, a lot of, like, the really blatant clickbait bullshit that you see, like, a lot of people doing. I've always disliked doing that. I've been pretty vocal about that. But one thing that I can't ignore is when doing something actively harms me, right, in the algorithm. So I, I know if I do this, it's going to fuck over my channel. So I've, like, done trial and error over, like, the past few years and stuff. Tried to see what works. And what I have experienced is that if I ever do a stream on YouTube that is, like, more low-key, right? It's not a leveling speedrun. It's not anything, like, special, right? Like, I stream Sod on the lunch. And even though most people don't watch me for classic stuff, that was still a good stream, right? I had good turnout. That's fine. But effectively... Any stream that would not perform well as a video will harm my channel as a whole. The algorithm can be really fucky with stuff like that. So, for a while there, I wasn't really sure what to do about that. In, in the short term, I just didn't stream things like that. I just couldn't, because I knew I'd be shooting myself in the foot. But, eventually, uh, I did a few Twitch streams last year in like November or something, just kind of like the test it out. And that was like purely just, I'm going to see how Twitch works, figure out like, you know, the user interface. I forget what I streamed. It was something completely random. It was literally just, I think I streamed ICC raid at one point, but it was purely like, I'm going to put this in my discord. Hey, I'm streaming if you want to watch and Whoever shows up, shows up. Like, I didn't announce it. Just kind of like these ones, where I did no official announcement for these. I just threw it up in my Discord and said, hey, I'm streaming if you want to watch. That type of thing. Uh, I might need to kill this crocodile to get this fishing thing. I can reach it from here if I get, like, the perfect... Yeah, there we go. That eh, should be fine. I'll just keep recasting um thing you like about my vids and streams is uh nothing but chill speaking content without this clickbait shit yeah exactly 
Um, but yeah, so Twitch, uh, one of the other things about uh, like streaming is because kind of going hand in hand with what I said before about it has to be something that would work well as a video, I am effectively forced to only stream World of Warcraft stuff. Because if I'm just like chill, casually playing like a different game, uh, like I way back when, and this is kind of one of those times when I realized that that was the case, uh, about like two years ago or so, around the time when Endwalker launched for Final Fantasy, I streamed Final Fantasy XIV a few times, and I had like people showing up. Like I had 15 viewers, which like isn't a ton for my channel, but there were people who also play Final Fantasy who wanted to show up and watch me play Final Fantasy and like I, I was doing not even interesting stuff right like I was farming my relic weapon or something like that um, leveling my uh, crafting and gathering jobs stuff like that and I wanted to try streaming it because I like Final Fantasy 14 I'm not actively playing it right now but at the time I was and I realized that those streams because they didn't do well that is kind of what I said, where YouTube fucked me because of that. So I just haven't really been able to stream other games. I've, like, done the one-off video on other games. Like, I even... I had a few Final Fantasy videos that did really well. Because they were on very specific topics where I, you know, was able to edit it. And even though it was outside of my usual audience, because it's a very specific thing. Like, I had a Endwalker fishing guide that performed really well. Stuff like that. Uh, but I wasn't able to stream it. So, basically, streaming on Twitch going forward is what I will use for side stuff. Like, sod, basically, if I'm not doing anything interesting. Like, uh, other games, I don't know what I'll stream. I honestly thought about, at some point, if I feel like it, I might even stream Total War Warhammer 3. Because I really like that game, and I don't really cover it in, like, videos, or I've never streamed it. But... If I am going to be, like, using Twitch going forward for that, because it is completely disconnected from my YouTube channel, algorithmically speaking, uh, I could experiment with stuff like that. And if people don't watch it, it doesn't fucking matter. But if there are a few people who would be interested in that, then it's just, hey, why not? Uh, so that's the plan going forward. But kind of going along with that, uh, I also am making a second channel for similar reasons. I talked about that, I streamed a little bit yesterday, and I discussed it there. And the first two videos, quote-unquote, for that second channel will just be, like, the recordings of these two streams, of the one yesterday and uh, this stream, just for the people who missed it, and also, like, as a way to explain what's going on. But I have a few very miscellaneous videos planned uh, for that second channel that I really want to make, but it's not the type of thing that I would really want to experiment with like on my main channel because I have no idea if it's going to do well or not, and if it does poorly, then it fucks me over. <laughs> that's just how it goes. So I figure that's a good way for me to experiment with like different content without fucking up the, uh, the algorithm is what it is. But that's the plan. At least. And I don't exactly know when I'm going to be doing that stuff, because at least, like, the next week or so, I have, like, a lot of, um, like, main channel videos. Like, my, the stuff that I'm doing on the main channel won't change at all. That's pretty much going to remain exactly the same. This is just, like, effectively, what this will allow me to do is... On my main channel, the way that things have gone for a while is like a new patch releases and there's obviously a lot of stuff I want to cover. So I put out like five very highly edited videos or something like that and then I put out the occasional speed run uh, every now and then and I'll have months where I have like 10 videos uploaded and then months where I have three videos uploaded because there's not really much going on that I want to make a guide on or cover in any serious way. And especially now that I'm done with um, all of the speedruns. So last year, I did every single weekend a different spec that people voted for in a poll. And I got through every single spec in WoW, did a leveling run with that so that I could eventually make the tier list. And we finished all of them. The tier list is made. Uh, it's been well received. People like that. So, you know, I'm glad. But the reality is, like, 
I did that non-stop for six months, and I don't exactly want to keep doing that in the immediate moment, especially because I'm probably going to do it all over again when the War Within comes out. So I can't be doing speedruns literally 24-7. It is kind of exhausting. I don't mind doing it. It's fun in moderation, but if I were to do like a speedrun every single week, and I was doing multiple last year, it would just get exhausting because it's a it's a lot of work setting those things up. Getting like all the all the research beforehand, figuring out what I'm gonna run, getting all the consumables and stuff prepped, and then of course sitting down and actually doing the run. Um it, yeah, it's pretty exhausting. Uh, and I do have some ideas for, like, variations of speedruns that I can do in the meantime. The only thing is, like, I have some... I have a few cool ideas that I think people would enjoy for, like, retail speedruns. Because the reality is, like, nobody wants to see me level yet another character like through the same exact leveling route I, I i say nobody i'm sure some people would still watch it i know people like just listening to it as like a you know uh basically a podcast they put it on in the background and that's great but when i say like nobody wants to watch it kind of in quotes i'm more so saying that like generally speaking the average viewership would not be there um and if i still really wanted to do it i was really feeling it i'd do it anyway but like i said it's it kind of gets exhausting so if I know that it's not going to perform super well and it's not something I'm really interested in doing just as a passion project, then I'm just not going to do it. Uh, but there are some cool variations on the retail speedruns that I want to try. But how do I put this? I think they have the potential to be really cool. And well, I could probably throw something together, like, basically make a cool little format for, like, oh, here's, like, a, a special, uh, like, challenge speedrun type thing, uh, and I could, within 30 minutes or something, whip up, like, a, uh, half-ass, like, rule set, and I think it would still be enjoyable for people to watch. It's a concept that I think if I really put a lot of time into really making a cool format and spending a lot of time like actually tweaking the rule set and making sure it's really polished it could be something really special so instead of just like rushing to do these speed runs right now i'm gonna like give it a little bit more time in the oven and make sure that whenever i get finished setting all that up which probably won't be for another few months but when it's done i am hoping that people will really enjoy it but that does mean that there's probably not going to be any retail speedruns for the foreseeable future. Uh, but I will probably do classic speedruns, which will be basically the exact same format, just a different version of WoW. Uh, Sod will be probably next up, because I I am very, very close to having a Sod speedrun set up. I... Oh, fuck. Accidentally hit Numlock. And apparently Numlock toggles auto run. Even though that's not my normal auto run key. Weird. Um, I was actually originally shooting to have uh, sod speedruns done before the end of phase one. I was going to try to do at least a single 1 to 25 mage speedrun. And it got to a point where I had a bunch of different videos that I wanted to make. Uh, namely, like, if I go through, honestly, a lot of the videos that I had planned just kind of didn't pan out, or not necessarily didn't pan out, I just needed more time in them. So, kind of like the elephant in the room, right, that a few people have asked me about is I still have not made the, uh, 60 to 70 guide, which was one of those main things I was working on, and while I have, like, a rough draft for it, the... The reality is, uh, I kind of was, well, two things. I was kind of burnt out a little bit, and I just didn't really feel like finishing it. But also, one of the reasons that I was a little bit burnt out on that is, I kind of got, like, fucked by YouTube uh, in terms of viewership in January. And it's... Yes! Finally! Oh my fucking god. I don't remember which... What is Desi and Queenfish? God! 
I have been doing the fucking fishing tournament, by the way, every single day. Well, every single time it's been up since the start of Sod Feet P2. This is the first rare fish I've gotten. I I have God, the fact that I've not gotten one, but hey, look. Finally. Ooh! This is high test Eternium fishing line. Okay. Honestly, that's not the one that I wanted. This is out of the three, my least desired one. Fuck it. I'll take something. It's better than not having any of the rare fish. The main issue with the high test Eternium line is... Obviously, I would want to use the Eternium line on my Arcanite fishing pole. But I actually can't use the Arcanite pole because it requires 300 fishing. So, effectively, my issue with this is I could either use it right now on my big iron fishing pole and just get, like, an extra plus five. Or I could hold on to it and use it on the Arcanite pole. I think I might just send it on my big iron pole and then, like, if I keep doing this every single week, or, like, well, every... It's bi-weekly now, so if I do this every uh, Wednesday and Sunday... Statistically speaking, I will eventually get a second Desi and Queenfish. And I have until Phase 3 to actually get it, because I won't be able to use my Arcanite Pole until then, but... Fuck yeah. Now I just need to get yet another rare fish. Ideally, two more. Ideally, uh, unique ones, too. Um, you're still going through those old Shadowlands stream VODs? They're nice as a podcast? Damn. The Shadowlands ones, too. Yeah, I have them all still on my channel. They are all viewable. A lot of people don't realize that, but they're all in the playlist. I like to remind people every now and then, because I sometimes get asked, like, oh, what happened to XYZ video? And, you know, obviously, most people who have been watching my videos for a while know that I tend to unlist them after a while. Sometimes I even unlist them pretty early if it's clear that they're not performing well. Uh, just... I think that's, like, good practice, even if it's something that a lot of people may seem see as counterintuitive. Uh, but sometimes people just don't hear that, so. Uh, what was I saying, though? Oh, yeah, so the, um... Yeah, I, honestly, I don't even know what happened. I don't like to be that guy who, like, complains about YouTube, because, like, there, there are... There's, like, a million people out there who will, like, moan and complain that, like, oh, the algorithm's fucking me over and, like, oh, I'm not getting views. And while I will say it, it sucks, yeah, I kind of got fucked over by the algorithm in January. I don't even really know what happened. It's one of those things where I can usually look at, like, my videos and say, this is why, like, this is getting less views and stuff like that. Because, uh, like, the reality is, 99% of the time, when you hear somebody complaining about the algorithm, I won't say 90, 90, like, a good amount of the time, when people complain about the algorithm, they just have shit videos. That's just it, right? Most people complain, all oh, the algorithm's fucking me over, and they just don't have good videos. Or, they have, like, a glaring weakness in one of their videos. Like, a lot of people will complain about the algorithm, but their thumbnails are terrible. And it's just, it's a garbage thumbnail. It doesn't communicate anything about what the video is about. It's like, who's going to click on this? You know, you have no idea what the video is. And, well, I know some people may not like making thumbnails. It is important. Yeah, that's part of, you know, making YouTube videos. And whenever I see people complaining about the algorithm and I look at their thumbnails and I'm like, like, what, what do you expect? Um, and I've had videos where, like, it bombs... I look at the analytics, and I'm like, yeah, I guess I misjudged this. I understand why this is doing poorly. Like, the click-through rate is terrible, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but, like, admittedly, some of my videos in January, I'm looking at the numbers. It just doesn't make sense. Like, my, um, especially my, the, the speedrun video, like, it, early January, it already wasn't super great. Like, I was getting really low, uh, just, like, impressions. Basically, impressions is, like, when your video shows up in people's recommendation. Kind of for no reason. Um, my follower dungeon video kind of got, like, clotheslines. I don't really know how to describe it. Just randomly, 
YouTube just stopped recommending it to anybody. Uh, there was it was like a dropped off a cliff, which is a shame because I put a lot of work into making that follower dungeon video. So that was kind of demoralizing. And the weird thing about it is it actually had a really good click through rate. You know, like the early uh, like performance of that video was really good. It got a lot of engagement. Lots of people were like having discussions in the comments about it. Um, I've had videos with infinitely worse click through rates that got like five times as many views. So that one just confused me. I'm like, I, I don't know what happened there. And then kind of a similar thing happened to like the, um, like the Scarab, uh, gong speed run thing where it did really, really good at the start. And then out of nowhere, I think clotheslining is probably the best way that I can use to like visualize it. Just YouTube cuts off the impressions. And you can see like it has detailed analytics for how this stuff works. Like um, my, my click through rate on this video is like one of my best in months. Which means like basically on average, what is the percentage of people who when this gets shown to them, they're likely to click. And generally speaking, if you have good watch time, which this has fantastic watch time for my channel, good engagement, like lots of people, even comments, likes, etc. Good click through rate. And it has like one fifth of the recommendations compared to like some of my other videos. And I, honestly, I just I can't explain that. That's just weird. I I am not like a YouTube algorithm guru. I'd like to think I kind of understand how it works, but it's just one of those things where, like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I usually can look at a video and be like, oh, yeah, you know, the watch time is bad. People stop watching after this point really early, and that's fucking the video. Or, you know, it's just not getting clicks, right? That happens. This one, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, everybody who has, like, given me feedback has said they enjoyed the video. All of the numbers look good. It's just not getting shown. I don't know. Um, and kind of like I said, I don't say this to complain and be like, wow, YouTube, give me more views, right? Because the algorithms, it, it's just like that sometimes. Like, just because I don't understand why it's doing that, I'm sure there is some reason, something that caused that to happen. I don't know. I don't understand it, but... It is what it is. All you can do is live with it. Are you fucking kidding me, man? What the fuck? This motherfucker. Ho 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 ho. You did not. Okay. It's like the, the fucking tournament isn't even active. Why are we why are we ganking over pools? Let me just make sure I remember his name. Sylvestris. Okay. Yeah, he's dead. He is so fucking dead. Um January is when YouTube started changing up the recommended feed with the implementation of the new section with videos from very small channels. Interesting. That I I did not know that. So it's entirely possible that that is something to do with it if they're making like changes to the algorithm i don't know if they like fuck something up like my looking at um at my numbers it's like yeah it's slowly like very very slowly gradually starting to like climb back up but yeah i got i got fucked this past month um and Obviously, that partially just was like, I I just didn't really feel like working on videos, um, when it's like everything that I uploaded was just getting destroyed. But also, the sixty to seventy leveling guide is just go probably going to be one of my bigger videos. Oh, this guy got fucked. Karma's a bitch, ain't it? Okay, hold on, I need to. One of the unfortunate things about Warlocks is our our setup is really, really, really long. So I have to meta, I have to put demon armor, I have to resummon my pet. 
Karma's a bitch. Karma's a bitch. Karma is a fucking bitch. I'm gonna teabag you in my fucking gnome form. Fuck. <laughs> I deserve that. I I fucking deserve that. I'm not even mad. Um. Okay. Uh. Look, at least I killed the druid. You know, he has to make the run back too. So uh, all is right in the world. Uh. Yeah. Right, so yeah, I I don't know. I I have no idea what's going on with uh, the YouTube algorithm, but it, it sucks. And oh yeah, what, what, the last thing I was gonna say on the subject, because the sixty to seventy leveling guide is probably going to be one of my bigger videos. Right? It requires a shit ton of work, and uh, the amount of like editing and stuff like that that's going to go into it, and it's gonna come with like an update to the website. I'm like sitting there looking at my numbers and I'm like, if I release this video now, it's just going to tank. And a lot of times when it comes to like YouTube videos, it's a very snowball-y process. The videos that do really well tend to do really well. Like I've had videos that get like a slow start and I think they're good videos and they end with like 5,000, 2,000 views, something really low. And I'm like, wow, I thought that video had a lot of potential and YouTube if it doesn't do well early on, it gets completely axed. Conversely, my fucking Colt here in speedrun is up to God even knows how many views now. Um, something ridiculously high. Let me find it. 585,000 views. Like, what the fuck is that? That's really high. Um... Yeah, see, this is problematic because Mr. Rogue over here, oh, there's so many, so many Horde players. Yeah, there's not a lot I can really do about this. If I get Shadow Stepped, I'm just kind of fucked, but my only real angle here is I, I just run down the beach. I go back to Yojamba Island and I just hope to find pools there. I am not going to be able to fight those guys. I'm not even. Yeah, I'm gonna skip this pool. Cause the druid's gonna head up there next. Uh, yeah. So I really. I've just got to go farther. On every second video, the recommended tab includes at least one new video. Ah, yeah. See. Now that you mentioned that, I have noticed that a lot. I've gotten a lot of videos of my recommended that just have nothing to do with any of the videos that I normally watch. And I thought that was weird. I'm just like, oh, the algorithm being weird. Honestly, I think that's a weird change on YouTube's end. Like, I understand what the likely motivation of that is. It's probably... You know, YouTube gets backlash over, oh, it's be it's hard for small creators to, like, um, get views, which I don't really think is true. It goes back to what I said before about, like, um, uh, whatchamacallit, like, if you have shit videos, they're just not going to get viewed. And I think a lot of people will just, like, blame the algorithm when they just have bad views. Because I've got, I've seen a lot of those videos. I didn't realize that it was directed change. But that is one of the things where I've seen a lot of, like, five view videos where I'm like, what does this have to do with, like, it's games that I've never played before. So you can maybe argue that, like, if they refine it and it becomes something where it's, it's still within your interests, but like it's a low viewed video within your interests. Like if I got a World of Warcraft video with five views, then I guess that would maybe make sense, but it's recommending me five view videos from games that I've never played before. I don't even recognize the name of some of the games that I'm getting like these videos recommended for. So if that's what's going on, then yeah, I, the algorithm is fucked. That's stupid. I don't know if that's the reason, but that is interesting. I, I had no idea that that was actually a targeted thing. Um, but yeah, all that to say, I, I feel it would just be effectively a suicidal move on my part to release what is likely to be one of my best videos 
at a time when YouTube is just demolishing my channel. Um, surprisingly, a lot of my recent sod videos have actually done pretty well. So I'm happy with that. I'm hoping that like whenever, whenever YouTube kind of gets over this phase, whatever this is, that it kind of reevaluates a lot of those videos because like the like the I, I, the dumbest speedrun I've ever done video, I think it's really good. I put a shit ton of work into that video, and a ridiculous amount of work into that video. And while it has like a respectable view count, it's like it's not doing anywhere near as well as I had hoped it would. I guess is probably a good way to describe it. Um, I would consider that to be one of the best videos that I've made. And and that's kind of the thing where like everybody that I know that has watched it has really liked it. I've gotten a shit ton of good reception on it. So it's not even like I think I need to improve it or anything. It's just it feels bad. It's like I think it's good. People seem to think it's good. It's just not getting viewed. So that's kind of why I think I've um taken a step back from that. I guess the nice thing about sod videos is like I don't expect the sod videos to do well anyway, so when they perform well, it's a pleasant surprise. If they don't do well, it's par for the course. Um and it's still well within like my niche, so I don't really think it harms my channel. Uh because it's very there's a clear distinction there. Um but like for instance, I made the video about, like, farming Scarlet Monastery Graveyard Rares, which, that was literally just a, on a whim, this is something I'm doing, I'm going to make a video on it. Because, like, I was kind of thinking, it's difficult for me to think of topics to cover for Classic, because I am not, I am not, like, a, a normal Classic player, I would say. Um... The nice thing about, like, retail World of Warcraft, right, is I've been playing retail WoW. I've been playing WoW in general since I was five years old. And one of the things about effectively growing up with this game is I have, like, gone through every single stage of being a World of Warcraft player. I have gone from being a massive casual, you know, when I was younger, and I understand, you know, like, farming mounts. Like, I hate farming mounts now, but, you know, there was a period of time when I was like 13 or so when I loved mount farming and I did like all the old like wrath uh raids and stuff to try and get like a Nixie and Drake and stuff. I I've been there. So while it's not something that I'm interested in right now and haven't been for quite a while, I get that mindset. Like I can I can put myself into the mindset of like a player who enjoys that. And I also I have a lot of friends who play well. So a lot of my friends who still farm mounts, I will talk to them and ask them like what is what is your opinion on this? Uh, like I had back when um, Blizzard started adding the uh, trading card game mounts to like Twitch drops and stuff. I thought it was really dumb. I I, I still think it's dumb at this point. It's kind of one of those things where like they've opened Pandora's box. At the, I at this point I hope they bring back all the trading card game things because if they're gonna do one, they better do all of them. Though I honestly believe that they should not have done that in the first place. Uh, but, it, you know, whatever. I don't feel as strongly about it as a lot of other people do. I just think that ruining the integrity of, like, collectibles is shitty. And I had, like, a lot of conversations with my friends who are big mount collectors and were on the opposite side of things, and they really liked having the ability to get these rare mounts that they effectively would never have been able to get otherwise. So hearing, you know, my friends, you know, I respect their opinions, like give me their takes on it. Like it allowed me to get like a more well-rounded view of that subject. And you know, I do that for a lot of stuff. So it's easier for me to, I guess, implant myself into like the mind of different demographics of retail World of Warcraft players, which I think is important when you're making videos because I'm making this for people. I'm making these videos for people. So I need to understand what do people want to watch? Uh, if you're just making videos for yourself, that that's fine, but they aren't guaranteed to get views. 
Uh, but if so, if you want to have your videos do well, you need to understand your audience. And for retail, well, I'd like to think I do. I definitely understand the mindset of like the hardcore raider because I am one. I I do I do the most degenerate shit imaginable for like min maxing rating. So that much I already know. If there is a grind that I think will give me player power. I am going to recommend it to people because I know that they will be interested as well because I am on the extreme end of that. Uh, and I know I'm on the extreme end of that because I'm surrounded by other people who call me a degenerate for some of the crazy grinds that I do. So I already know that I have that covered, but uh, even more casual stuff, like, for instance, my rep farming video for, um, uh, what's it called? Like the... Uh, Dream Wardens, which was like another video semi-recently at this point. It was a few months ago, but that video did really well. Uh, where was that? Or when was that? Um, yeah, or easily reach renowned 20 with the Dream Wardens. 115,000 views for like a, a mini guide like that. That's actually really good. And that's the type of thing where obviously as a hardcore raider, I understand why getting the Augment Rune early is important, and I have all of, like, the research and practice and min-maxing stuff to get that as quickly as possible. So I know for a fact that, like, people in my demographic, they're going to eat that video up because I'm going to teach them the best way to min-max it. But then I also have to say, okay, well, hardcore raiders are inherently a niche part of the population. So then I tried to structure that video not just to appeal to people like me, but also... How do I make this relevant for like the average player? How do I make them understand why this is beneficial for them and how they can do this without having to like super duper min max it? Because like, I know a lot of people are gonna walk away from that video without even really watching it and saying, ah, oh, this is only for hardcore raiders. And um, unless you do all these special min maxy things, it's not worth it. And I tried to very clearly explain early on that no, that's not the case. Uh, the steps I'm outlining here are very easy to follow and will apply to anybody. Um, and I think that's important. But all, all of that to say, um, I don't have that for Classic. I I don't feel like I understand Classic players. Because I am like... I am a very weird demographic of Classic players. Namely, retail players. Uh, which I would say, like, I, I am in my own demographic that a very, 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 very small part of the classic player base is in. Like, um, if I could, like, based on what, what I know from the classic community, from what, like, I've seen, and from the responses that I've gotten on the classic videos that I've made, the ones that have done well and the ones that have done poorly, I would, like, divide classic players into... Um... I mean, you could probably think of a bunch of different little categories um but like let's say five main categories maybe i'll expand that there are the dads right and i would say like maybe yeah i was gonna say casuals and dads as two separate categories they're kind of similar but i think they're, they're a little bit different you have like the casual nostalgia players is i guess maybe like a way to describe it and even within that you have some like brand new players one of the other things that I've noticed is there are far less new players, like completely new to World of Warcraft in Classic relative to Retail. Uh, in Retail World of Warcraft, I have a ton of people who watch my videos that are brand new players to World of Warcraft in general, and I need to keep that in mind when making videos. So a lot of times when I'm making a Retail video, even if there's a topic that I'm sure the vast majority of WoW players are already familiar with, I might explain it in a little bit more detail because... I know that some people watching it will have no fucking clue what I'm talking about. Like, I get comments on my leveling guide asking me, like, what a Hearthstone is. So some people are really, really, really new. And, it, like, I, when... It, it, it's kind of... I need to draw a line somewhere. I need to say, I'm not going to go into excruciating detail on every little bit. Because if I treat the average viewer like a completely new player and like explain everything in super detail most people are going to get bored so i need to strike a balance and something like when i say use your hearthstone to or like uh, uh trying to think of the the, the comments that i'm referring to that i'm thinking of right now is in my main leveling guide 
the uh, 10 to 60 one. At some point, I think I say, like, set your Hearthstone to, uh, like, Stormwind or Orgrimmar, and then after hitting level 20, use your Hearthstone. Basic stuff. And I'll get, I got a comment from somebody who didn't understand what that meant and was very confused because they didn't understand how to set and use their Hearthstone. And that's the type of thing where, like, I didn't even consciously think about it while writing the video that I should explain how to use a Hearthstone. Because it's like World of Warcraft 101, but there are people out there watching that type of video who genuinely don't understand that. So, well, I probably still wouldn't go that basic for videos it's something i try to at least think about and like hey maybe i should go into more detail on this in classic i tend to try to stick to like a bit more of like the technical stuff and not over explain everything because the new player viewership i think is lower less people are diving into wrath classic or season of discovery as their first version of world of warcraft a lot of people start with base World of Warcraft and then will try out Sod once they're already slightly familiar with it. Um, that is not a universal rule, of course. There are new players who try Classic. I've seen uh, comments from people like that, and I'm like, oh, huh, they do exist. Uh, but I have found it to be far less common. So I tend to try to be like much more technical in terms of explanations when I'm making Classic Guides. Uh, technical is not like super complicated, but like I don't go into like super duper basic details. Uh, nice. I have enough tasty fish, I think. Um, what was I saying though? Uh, but yeah, so for classic players, you have like casuals, like nostalgia players. Uh, maybe not everybody's playing for nostalgia, maybe some people just like the classic vibe, but people who are just playing super casually and maybe like to keep up the community, because like one of the other things about that is I don't really think that the average casual classic player is in tune with the stuff that's going on like in the community. I think a lot of the people who are playing classic for nostalgia are... Can you shut my door when you get a chance? Oh. Okay. I didn't even know you were here. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I think the, um, the average, uh, like, casual, and I mean, like, serious casual, uh, classic player probably does not engage with, like, YouTube videos and stuff outside of, you know, the really broad, like, Asmongold stuff about, like, generic classic hype. But my videos will never really fall into that sphere that appeals to them anyway. Whereas I think the average semi-casual retail player probably at least checks out YouTube for new content to like see what's available because the reality is retail is a much more complicated game in terms of like the new systems that are coming out. And it can be hard to really figure that out on your own as a casual player. So I think it's a more broad subset of the player base um but then you also have like kind of the the dad gamers which you could consider casual but i think like dad gamers will still try to take the game a little bit seriously not like min maxi but they will be like hey i'm going to engage with the community i'm going to at least like watch a nomergon video or something before i set into the raid but they're they're probably going to like leave that nomergon video in the background like they'll they'll leave it in the back tab they'll tell themselves that they watched a video when they like did not actually absorb 90 percent of the information thrown at them and then they'll show up to raid they'll press their buttons all wrong but they're having fun they're you know drinking a beer with the boys and stuff like that uh I also don't really think the dad gamers are my target audience uh, because the reality is like if I have like a slightly interesting video that um, will appeal to like all classic players, like I think the dad gamers are might be the type of people who would enjoy watching a classic speed run that I would do because they might find that entertaining even if it, they aren't looking to optimize their leveling like as much as I am in that video. Uh, but a video that's, like, talking about how to optimally farm pre bis like the video I put out before, or how to solo the Dark Iron Ambassador, like I did today, like, that, I'm, 
I'm probably not really the type of channel they're going to be watching anyway, so I don't really need to worry about, like, aiming my videos at that demographic, I think. Uh, you said you started playing WoW in 2019 Classic. Interesting. Yeah. I think the original Classic release, I can understand why more people would have played around then. I know a lot of people who, maybe not necessarily they had started playing WoW for the first time then, but a lot of my friends who had very barely touched WoW did try out Classic. Uh, the original 2019 release because it was like kind of a cultural phenomenon. Right, where like everybody was talking about, oh, wow, classic. Like, you know, it was a big thing that a lot of people wanted, and obviously it was really popular at the time. So that much I understand. When I say like I don't think new players are coming to classic, I mean more so now. Sod is honestly the best thing that could happen to like new classic players. I actually think there have been a decent amount of new players trying out Sod because it is very different. And it's seen as like a more approachable version of Classic. But Wrath Classic in particular, I like the later versions of Classic, TBC, Wrath, like definitely Season of Mastery and stuff, um, I don't really think a lot of new players came to. One of the exceptions, ironically, I think was Hardcore. A lot of people I knew, even people uh, who don't really play WoW, tried out Hardcore. I actually... I was having a conversation with some of my old Guild Wars 2 friends who I haven't, well, I haven't like really talked to them in years. We chat occasionally. And I found out that they were playing uh, on hardcore servers. And I guess it's one of those things where like if you're into MMOs, even if somebody wasn't super into original classic, classic hardcore was kind of similar to the 2019 release where, um, you know, it was a very novel idea and a lot of people were talking about it. That being said, I do think Hardcore has fallen off a bit in that demographic, because a lot of the people who were more like tourists tried it out, died below like level 14, and then just stopped playing. Maybe they made a few more characters and continually died, but I think a lot of those people weren't going to make it very far in Hardcore anyway. But at least that initial like first few weeks, a lot of people were playing who weren't like traditional World of Warcraft players, which was kind of cool to see got like a lot of new people playing i even i got my dad and my sister to try hardcore and they had no idea what they were doing i that was a fun stream ironically i was the one who came closest to death but it was because i was trying to save their asses because they didn't do anything but i i knew what i signed up for when i did that stream but anyways uh what was i saying oh yeah other other types of classic players um so the other, the other three, because I said like, you know, two, I, I think off the top of my head, there's like five main groups of classic players that I can think of. Um, I'm putting dad gamers and like real casuals into kind of two separate categories because I think the average dad gamer pays a little bit more attention probably than the true nostalgia casual who doesn't interact with like the community videos at all. Um... But then, like, the final three groups of classic players that at least I've identified that, uh, I, I'm sure it's not as cut and dry, but, like, this is generally what I try to keep in mind when writing my videos. You have the hardcore classic players who are, like, extremely elitist. And this is something I've noticed because I, I would consider myself a hardcore retail player. Um, I'm definitely, like, I, I am not, like, in Echo or Liquid, right? But I rated a cutting-edge level, like, you know, we didn't get Hall of Fame, but, you know, below Hall of Fame, just below Hall of Fame. Um, but at least the way that I engage with the game is effectively the same as pretty much everybody in a top 30 and onwards guild, ballpark, uh, now, obviously, they raid, like, extra hours. They take things a little bit more seriously in terms of, like, uh, recruitment and raid environment and stuff. But the way in which, like, the gameplay, the way that I play the game is roughly the same as pretty much everybody in those guilds. You know, top 20 worlds, you start getting into, you know, there are people doing degenerate shit that even I don't do. Um, but past that, I know how the average retail you know, hardcore raider thinks. 
And while I don't necessarily claim to speak for like all hardcore retail players, I know that like my opinions are not going to be unpopular because I generally speaking share the same sentiment with like most other players around my level. So I understand that. And I think th this is one of those things where I might just not understand classic players enough. I get the impression, based on my interactions with both communities, the average hardcore retail WoW player is a lot more understanding and friendly about like discussion outside of the game relative to classic players. All right, so that is that is the end of the fishing tournament. So I got one of the fish, better than nothing. I was hoping to get another one, but oh well. Uh, ooh, floating wreckage. I would go for that floating wreckage if it wasn't guarded by an elite crocodile. But now I need to make my way down to Booty Bay to turn in all this stuff. And as a little bonus... Oh, there's another floating wreckage. Okay, this one I actually will get. I wonder if I can... Sneak that one. If I get the right angle, I might be able to fish that one. I don't know, that crocodile... Yeah, nice. I've been burning through my stockpile of Rumsey Rum Black Label. I need to get more of these things. Because I fished non-stop in Tenaris for like the first three weeks of Sod. And I got a lot of Rumsey Rum Black Label during that time. And I've just kind of been burning through that slowly over the past two months. But I think I'm down to like 50 or so. And... Yeah. Probably need to do that again. Uh, oh. Bolt of Mage Weave is good. Eh. Ah, uh, two Bolt of Mage Weave. Nice. Okay, those are actually some pretty good trunks. Fuck it, I'm gonna go for it. Um. Yeah, the crocodile can't get me from here, I don't think. I think if I get, like, the very tail end, I can barely reach the edge of the pool. Yeah, that should be in. I think that's in the hitbox. So I should be able to reach it. I just need to make sure that... Oh, it's getting a little close. I need to get down to Booty Bay before the 10-minute mark past the hour to show off this uh, neat little trick. That was not, well, it was not technically included in my uh, fishing tournament video. But it's one of those things where it's a little trick that if you put two and two together, you can realize like a really cool strategy that I didn't even really fully think about until after I had already made that video. But I probably wouldn't have talked about it anyway because it's like really min maxi. But. I'll show it off here just for anybody watching the stream now or watching the recording later. Because I think it's pretty neat. And it's also the type of trick where if too many people are aware of it, it no longer works. But if there's only a small subset of players, then they can all benefit and make, like, a really good profit off of it. There we go, finally. Let's see. Mana potions. Eh. Bolts of Mage Weave, fine. Uh. Yeah, so classic players. Um. Obviously, one of those final three demographics of uh of players is what's that? Yeah. That's interesting. That's actually not a bad weapon. Hmm. 
Oh, I can also, I can fix my audio now. There we go. Back to normal. There's another floating wreckage? Oh. I can't. I can't. What am I in combat with? Oh, fuck. I pulled the guards. I thought I was far enough away. I don't think they'll reach me. There's another... What the fuck? How many floating wreckages are there? I'm so tempted to get these things. But it's right outside of Gromgol, and it's during the Blood Moon, so... I feel like if I go for that wreckage, I'm just gonna get ganked by a Horde player, and... I have, like, five minutes to make it back to Booty Bay, so... That's a lot of wreckage pools back-to-back, -back, though. Uh, yeah, where was I? So, obviously, good chunk of players in Classic, well, I say good chunk, a fairly small subset, but they exist, obviously, I'm one of them, is retail players who also like playing Classic. And I think a lot of the retail players, uh, you know, if it's just a casual player who... Um, uh, whatchamacallit, a casual player who just plays both versions of the game for fun, I'm including them more so in the casual section. When I say, like, a retail player, I mean, like, a retail raider. Because there is actually a decent amount of people that I raid with or I'm friends with, like, in retail who play Classic semi-regularly, and we all kind of have the same approach to Classic, which is, it's really easy, <laughs> kind of. Uh, because if you're familiar with Retail Well and you know, like, how the game works, Classic is not hard. And, like, the way that I approach Classic is just so fundamentally different than the way that a lot of Classic players approach Classic. And, like, the way that I build Warlock Tank, like, nobody plays Warlock Tank this way. But it's effective. It, it is. And... It kind of goes to show, like, I made my Warlock Tank Dungeon Guide, like, a few months ago, or a month ago, about two months ago at this point. Uh, but when I made that video, it is a, it's a good video, it's actually performed reasonably well for a classic video. The build in that is good. I used it to tank dungeons a shit ton of times. I made a tank in retail, I've tanked dungeons for years, right? Like, I, I made a tank in classic too, I played Warrior when classic originally came out. I play Prop Paladin in Wrath Classic. I know how dungeon tanking works. And I homebrewed this build with Everlasting Affliction that, like, nobody else is running. And it's really fucking good for doing dungeons. So I made a video covering it. I talked about, you know, how to build it, how to play it, etc. And the amount of, like... It, Honestly, I, I was going to say maybe hate isn't the right word. I, actually, hate probably is the right word. I got so much hate from random classic players in the comments. Most of those, by the way, deleted comments. Uh, if YouTube doesn't flag it, I just delete it because, like, just the amount of sheer vitriol spewed at me by those classic players is, like, it's staggering for a video about, like, a fun build that I'm using to tank dungeons. And that leads me to, like, my final subsection of Classic players, where I think these people come from, which is Classic players who think that they are hardcore, but are fucking dog shit. And there is a surprisingly large amount of people in the Classic player base who I think fall into that category. Because, like... The way that I draw the line, right, is hardcore classic players are at least relatively good at the game, right? They may not be as good as, like, the retail players, because I'm going to be completely honest. The best classic players that I've ever played with are retail WoW players. Uh, that it, That's just how it is, right? I am sure that, like, the absolute top guilds in classic are dedicated classic players that, like, you know, live and breathe every... Ah, oh, fuck, yeah, see? I was hoping to... um to get that turn in. I missed it. There's still more though, so that's it's whatever. But this just means that I need to wait a little bit longer. Tacoma was actually uh Tacoma was the guy in my uh fishing tournament video. 
who uh, told me about like the thing being available in TBC. So I guess he came back for his um, second win. That's neat. Uh, but yeah, like I'm sure the absolute top tier of uh, classic players, like the really, 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 really good ones, the ones who like go for world first, quote unquote, like they're more classic firsts, realistically. Uh, they are probably like dedicated diehard classic players, but the average person who I have played with that is actually good at the game, they are a retail player who is playing classic for fun because a lot of the knowledge is transferable. Well, a lot of classic players may love to have you believe that, you know, this game is just so complicated and it's so different from uh, retail. Wow. And they'll say like retail babies and stuff like that. The retail babies are the ones who are generally good at the game. Because they understand how to analyze, you know, what is good and what is bad and build correctly. And they don't get caught up in, like, the clickbait nonsense culture that it kind of permeates Classic WoW. And, you know, I, I... I read the Warlock Discord. Like, I have, like, my finger on the pulse, kind of. But I don't follow the Warlock uh, Classic Discord. Because half the stuff they say there is just fucking nonsense. And they'll like they'll say that they're running simulations, and it's just like as somebody who has simmed myself many, 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 many times in retail well, and I understand both how to sim myself, and I understand when simulations fall short of actual like gameplay value, and like when you should actually use a sim, and when you should just ignore it because it's not practical. I can look at some of the stuff that's being posted in these classic discords and understand that it is absolute gobbledygook. It's nonsense. It, it is people who think that they understand how the game works, trying to tell each other, ah, yes, this is how you play classic WoW. And to a certain extent, that has been fine up until now because we have had years of private servers where... All of this stuff has been mathed out. And a lot of the, you know, in the category I put truly hardcore classic players have done the math and actually figured this stuff out. And they understand the inner workings of the game to a T. I don't think it's a very large amount of people, but some of them are there. And they have had 15 or 20 years at this point to uncover all of the inner workings of uh, classic World of Warcraft. And... Back then, that was fine. And I think a lot of classic players now are used to having the answer. This is how the game works. This is the best way to play this spec. It's been tried and tested on private servers for 20 years. And now we're getting to Season of Discovery. And Season of Discovery is new content. It is retail classic. It is new stuff, new abilities, new builds in a classic format. So you have a lot of players who have, have for five or six years now, however long Classic has been out, uh, have been reading guides as gospel and looking at like what the, the private server players have been telling them to do and copying that. And, and this is, like I said, the other category of, you know, people who think they are hardcore but are just dog shit. Um, they, they blindly copy what all of the top players tell them to do because, well, you know, they played on private servers. Clearly they know better. So now these same private server players are in the, the class discords, just basically preaching their theory crafting as gospel for the brand new season of discovery content, despite it being completely new. And we have weeks of testing, but they are saying definitively, this is how you play this spec. And because the classic players are used to that, they don't know any better. They just think, yep, yeah, this is how I play the spec. And then because I am out here recommending a different build. <laughs> Get fucked. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, one of the issues about trying to gank people in Booty Bay is you can't tell when somebody has resisted the call of the Blood Moon if they're cross-faction until you attack them and get clapped by the guards. Uh, so that guy learned the hard way. Uh, if you are 
part of the Blood Moon, though, uh, the guards will ignore you, as you can see with that other dude. Um, but yeah, so the, the issue that you have here now is I've had, like, good discussions with some people on my classic videos, namely the guides, right? Like, I don't think... I haven't gotten, like, any pushback on some of, like, the whatever classic videos I made about, you know, um like gold farming and stuff I've, I've actually gotten like decent discussion about my gold farming videos on you know ask people asking for tips because that much is like we all understand that there are like new opportunities to make gold and sod but the most divisive classic video i made for sure was my warlock tanking video and while i got some people who genuinely wanted to have like discussions about oh I like the incinerate builds because XYZ and here are the advantages. And I had like some decent back and forth where like the end result was them saying, I respect your opinion. I like my build better. And I'm like, hey, I respect your opinion. I like this build. That's why I made a guide on it. And those people are who I consider like the good classic players, maybe not hardcore, but within that general sphere of like, they clearly know what they're talking about. And while they may disagree with me, they understand that it's not a solved game because there's new content. And um, they're willing to, like, you know, try to explain to me their point of view. But I get, like, I got a lot of comments who... I'm not going to, like, name the YouTubers that they referenced. But there are a few YouTubers who make Warlock stuff. Where, like, if you're related... If you know anything about, like, Classic WoW, um, the, the YouTubers and stuff, you probably know probably who they are. But there is a few... Warlock content creators, and I, I have nothing against them, but there are, I, I had multiple comments from people who said, I watched X person. They said to do something different than what you're doing. They are better than you. You should delete your video. You don't know what you're talking about. It, like surprisingly high amount of comments of that general nature. It wasn't always the same YouTuber that they referenced. Uh, but there were multiple comments that's something like, I watched this person's video, they know more than you, you should just stop making videos. <laughs> like, and usually, uh, I'm paraphrasing, it was usually more broken grammar <laughs> is the hallmark of comments like that, uh, but also really hateful stuff, like you're fucking garbage, you're fucking trash, that that kind of stuff. Um, Sometimes, you know, they they drop a gamer words in there. Those ones get flagged by YouTube automatically. I don't need, even need to put in work. If there's a gamer word in there, YouTube will just be like, hey, we uh, we blocked this comment. Do you want to approve it? And I'm just like, ah, no. Um, but surprisingly high volume of those comments on, on that Warlock video. And I think it is a lot of people like that who just, they, they're so used to being told what to do that they cannot fathom that there are players who have different opinions on how to play something in Classic. Because that's just not how the game has worked up until this point. Whereas, like, in retail World of Warcraft, there's, like, homebrew builds are almost celebrated. Right? Like, obviously, there is generally considered to be, like, a, a best way to play most specs. But, uh, you know, when you see somebody running with, like, a really wacky talent build in Mythic Plus and they manage to pull it off, you don't flame that person for not knowing how to play the game. You're proud of them for experimenting. And it's like, maybe their build wasn't as good as the meta build, but hey, they're trying something new. And it's probably something that really people haven't played around with before. Who knows? Maybe it turns out to be really good. That has happened before in the history of World of Warcraft many times over. Uh, you don't find that stuff out unless you try and experiment. And uh, I think retail players in general are much more used to that style of thinking. So I generally speaking get less pushback even from people who may not necessarily see eye to eye with me compared to stuff like that in Classic. That was a very long rant, but um, I don't know. It's just something that I've been thinking about for a while and... Generally speaking, it's not a good idea to trash talk your viewer base. <laughs> so this is the kind of thing where like a, a chill stream recording that's a relatively low amount of people are going to watch is probably a good place to have that rant because I still think it's an interesting subject of discussion. But um, see, if I have a discussion on YouTube, I'd probably get blamed in the comments there, too. So uh, I have no interest in opening myself up to that again. Right around now, 
Uh, Wriggle Bass Bait's probably going to pop up again, because around... Tacoma won at... Yeah, Tacoma won at 11.09.03. Uh, Wriggle will respawn anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes after he has uh, been interacted with again. So... It's been 10 minutes approximately since Tacoma turned his in. Which means that, um... Right about now. Now, nobody else is camping the NPC, so technically speaking, I don't need to snap it. But I just want to be ready, just in case, if I'm distracted and somebody sneaks it in. Uh, I should also note, I have already won the tournament multiple times, so I have Hook of the Master Angler here. Uh, I should probably be using it more often, come to think of it. I kind of forgot that I have this, because... I've been using my swim speed stuff to quickly, like, get through the water, but technically, if I just had Hook of the Master Angler equipped, I could have turned into a fish and then swam quickly. Eh. Yeah, I should probably do that next time. It's... I should get into the habit of using this trinket. That way, I can build the muscle memory now, so that when I really need it, like, if I'm leveling from 40 to 50 or something and I need to swim through the water, I can, like, quickly swap to it or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, actually, that, it is nice to have that. Uh, I should also put it here. Yeah, that's a good reorganizing. I have all my swim speed stuff. So this is the Black Fathom Deep swim speed ring, as her silk belt, which is a staple. Every classic player should have one of these. And then my hook of the Master Angler. So I always carry around a swim speed or, well, just general move speed stuff with me when I'm playing classic. My backpack is just a collection of knickknacks and whatnot. I still have, like, food in here, but as Classic goes on, I'll probably have, like, Skull of Impending Doom in here. And a bunch of other random knickknacks. Actually, before I forget, I will just go ahead and add... High test Eternium fishing line to my big iron fishing pole. Eternium line. And then that is. It is five skill points. Let me just confirm that. I have 225 fishing. If it's plus five, this should put me at 250. Uh, it says plus 25. Huh. Is it not working? Eternium line. Oh, it is plus 25. I'm stupid. Yeah. I can't read. Uh, yeah, the pole is plus 20. The Eternium line is plus 5. So in total, it is plus 25, which is exactly what I'm getting. Okay, so yeah, it's working. So. I won't be able to use the Arcanite pole for months anyway, so there's no reason to save the line for that. I'm sure I'll get another one, because I still need to farm this for these other things. Uh, what is... what do they do? I'm just on my second monitor, so I can keep an eye on Wriggle. Kiefer's Angelfish. Uh, this one gives the Lucky Fishing Hat, right. So, this is the one that I really want. I definitely want the Fishing Hat more than uh, the others. And then Brownells, is this Boots? Brownell, Brownells Blue Striped Racer. This gives, yeah, this is the Boots. Nat Pagel's Extreme Angling Boots, plus five fishing. All right. Yeah, and since there's no Boots of the Bay in Classic, that is your best in slot fishing stuff, so... I'd like to get both the boots and the helmet at some point. But I'm willing to bet that, considering how many casts I've had to do to just get that one rare fish... Oh, there we go. Wriggles up. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. You talk to him, turn in your 40 tasty fish, you take Hook of the Master Angler. Now, I already have both of these rewards, like I said, but this is not unique. So I can take a second Hook of the Master Angler. And this vendor is for 2 gold, 50 silver. 
So the quest reward for winning is one gold, 80 silver. And then if I just run over here, vendor hook of the master angler, two gold, 50 silver. So that's, I, I don't really feel like doing math. Um, three, like four, four gold, 30 silver uh, for winning the tournament and vendoring the hook, which uh, it vendors for significantly more than the fishing pole. The Arcanite fishing pole vendors for like 30 silver. The hook vendors for two gold 50. So the hook is definitely the better option there. And it only takes 20 fish. So is that guy going to try to gank me? Uh, for reference, right? If we turn in the bonus fish, right? Where this is, you turn in five fish, you get 23 silver. So crunching some numbers really quick. Five fish for 23 silver. It costs 40 fish to win the tournament. So 40 fish gives you 4.3 gold for winning the tournament. Uh, five fish gives you 23 silver if you do the bonus tournaments. Uh, 40 divided by five is eight. So eight times 0.23 equals one gold, 84 silver. So if you manually turned in all 40 of your excess fish to jang the npc you only get one gold 80 if you turn that into wriggle and vendor the hook of the master angler you get uh four gold 30. so you're effectively making like a little over two golds well it's almost exactly two gold 50 silver because you're vendoring the reward i guess technically speaking the amount of gold that you get from the turn-ins is effectively the same as the quest reward so it kind of averages out like that I never thought of it like that, but I guess in that sense, you're effectively making an extra two gold 50 from vendoring the quest reward uh, if you talk to Riggle. And because he respawns multiple times, uh, what I can do here is just do one more turn in. So here I can throw these out because I won't need, need it. I have 40 tasty fish, which is enough to win the event one more time. Let me make sure I don't have any others hiding. Yeah, it's just those. And Riggle will continually respawn every 15 minutes past the hour. So I just won at, like, what was the time on his shout? I won at 1124, which was actually, like I said, 15 minutes exactly past the time when Tacoma won. So uh, I guess, I think his respawn timer must be at 15 minutes after the event has ended. Uh, it varies a little bit, though. I don't know why. Um... So 15 minutes from now would be, or 15 minutes from when I won, would be at 11.39 my time. So in about 12 minutes. Uh, and then Riggle will reappear. I'll be able to turn in these 40 tasty fish, and I will get another hook of the Master Angler. And I'll make, effectively, a free 2.5 gold. So... This is not like an efficient gold farming method, which is why if you have multiple people competing to do this turn in, this no longer works. It's no longer worth it. And the amount of time that it takes to farm 40 tasty fish, it's like 20 to 30 minutes, give or take. Uh, in 20 to 30 minutes, well, like four gold, 30 silver is not a bad amount. There are a million farms that you can do to get like, I don't know, 20 gold per hour if you're really hardcore grinding. You probably have to be like a major hunter. Warlocks have options. Um, but there are better like raw gold farms if that's what you're going for. This is definitely not an efficient gold farm. But if you look at it from like my perspective, I'm doing this to get the rare fish. I'm going to be sitting here fishing to get this no matter what. So effectively, this is like, while I'm getting these fish, it's literally just free gold. Because I don't need to do anything. I already got the stuff. I just sit here AFK. When Riggle pops up, I turn in the stuff. I get free money. Bam. Just two birds with a stone kind of thing. So it's useful for anybody like me who's already doing this. Um, not really a great option for everybody else. Which is why I don't really want to make like a video about it, but... It is a nice, like, passive gold farm. Uh, but yeah, I'm not gonna, like, s sit around and just wait another 10 minutes just to do that turn in, you know. 
I wanted to show that you get the idea, but you know, that's kind of it. Uh, so I'll end the stream here. Uh, for the people watching right now, I will. I'll do another stream tomorrow. I'll level my paladin. I don't know exactly when that'll be. I don't know how long I'm gonna stream. But the nice thing is, tomorrow I have no obligations. I have nothing to worry about. I don't have like a raid planned or whatever, so I can just do things whenever the fuck I want. Uh, I, I don't know if I'll make a video tomorrow. Honestly, the Dark Iron Dwarf video is doing really good for a classic video. So um, I might just like let that ride for an extra day. Sometimes if a video is doing really well, I don't like to... I like to give it a forty full 48 hours and not do like a video the day after. Um, but I do have a lot of stuff to cover for lock tanking, so... I might actually, like, stitch together a No Morgan uh, lock tank run. Piecing together both this run and the kills that I did last week, because I have tanked every... Uh, I've tanked every single uh, No Morgan boss at some point as a main tank, and now as an off tank. I guess the only boss that I haven't fully tanked is Thermaplug. Uh, I tanked the first half of Thermaplug um, as a as a main tank, and then just like stopped early. But actually, I'll, I'll probably do that. Make that video for tomorrow. Um, it'll require a bit of editing, but it, you know, whatever. It's probably important, and I have like so many topics that I need to cover that I kind of just need to get these things out. Uh, so whenever I'm done with that No Morgan video, I'll stream. The nice thing, though, is because I don't have any obligations later in the night, if I don't start streaming until, like, 4 or 5 p.m., it doesn't fucking matter, and I could stream until late at night if I wanted to. I mean, hell, I'm streaming right now, and it's 11 p.m. by time, so we'll see. Uh, I will also try to get these videos posted uh, on my second channel, which I haven't set up yet, so... I'll see about getting that posted, and yeah, I'll see. I, I might, like, honestly, what I might do, yeah, actually, I, I will do that, come to think of it. I will do um, tomorrow's stream, and then after tomorrow's stream is done, I will post the recordings for all three of those streams on the second channel, like, in one fell swoop, and then throw them up on YouTube for people to watch. So they'll, they'll have that over the weekend. Uh, to look forward to, I guess. And I'll probably put a bonus video out there. Which, you know, I don't have time to record right now. But it would be nice to have. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's it. Wait, does this guy have the fishing hat? I think that's the fishing hat. Motherfucker. Of course he gets it. Hmm. That's the... That's the one from the event. This guy's gear is pretty good. Damn. Is this... What the... Wait, whoa, whoa. This guy's Arena Grandmaster already? Alright. Shit. He's been... Yeah, this is... This is a rogue tank. Holy fuck. I don't know why he's using Hook of the Master Angler. Well, probably just fishing gear. I doubt that's his actual shit. Damn. This guy's been grinding. Okay, I gotta check. I, I have to look at his logs. Is he actually good? Because, like, he's got some sick gear here. So I want to make sure he's putting it to good use. Oh, that's a negative. Oh, oh, oh no, buddy. <laughs> Uh, he, he got a 60 parse as a rogue tank on Mechanical Menagerie. It's not bad. That said, like, rogue tanking is just kind of a meme this phase anyway. I am amazed that he has Arena Grandmaster. That is not... That's gotta be difficult. I mean, hey, I... I have no interest in farming for this trinket, because... This is not a DPS increase. But especially for a rogue tank, which is really squishy and has no way... Oh, Rickles... Wow, that was fast. Yeah, see, that time it was only 10 minutes. It wasn't the full 15. 
Alright, there we go. Boom. Then I walk over here. Uh, where did it go? There we go. Boom. So I just made like... Eight golds? Nine? Close to nine golds. Uh, actually, a little bit more than that. Because of the excess fish. So yeah, round nine gold just from doing that event. Little fishing tournament. And I didn't even get the full thing. I missed the entire... Uh, yes. Uh, I missed the entire first hour. And I made nine gold from that. And got a high test attorney mine. Uh, Riggle respawns every 15 minutes. You search. Carlton. On YouTube. We have a video. Explain. Yeah, it's up on Wednesdays. In Saw. 7 to 9 server. Addition to the Sunday. Um, yeah. Ah, oh, that's a nice way to end it. I gotta wriggle. Turn in again. Uh, and that's all I need, so I guess... I guess I just tarth. Uh... I thought about, um... Going to solo the Dark Iron Ambassador right now. Though, I kind of want to wait until later... When uh, everybody's offline, because I don't want to—I don't want them to see me going into Nomergon to grab the rare, even if, it, like, at this point, the reset is tomorrow, so it, it's a moot point anyway. Um, I'm gonna change the stream title just so the the recording gets fixed, and then we'll just end it here. Nomergon, full clear. As a lock tank plus Stranglethorn Veil vale fishing. Alright, there we go. Fix the title so the recording will have it. And I mean, I can name it whatever the fuck I want whenever I upload the recording to YouTube, but you know. At least it'll already be up on Twitch for anybody who wants to watch it there. So. Yeah, I guess in that case it doesn't matter if I upload it. Oh, fuck. Somebody just dropped the boon. Uh. Make sure I gotta remember to chrono boon. There we go. Uh, yeah, all right. Well, I'll end it there. Uh, thanks to the people who watched, and if you are someone in the future who is watching this either on the Twitch recording or YouTube, thank you for watching it as well. And once again, I will stream at some point tomorrow. Obviously, if you want to know when, I'll post about it in my Discord along with, uh, you know, the other video. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you then. Peace.